even though I completely understand the importance of it. That is Pastor Appreciation Day. We are here to honor Pastors Drake and Taylor. Of course, being Drake's former pastor and Taylor's former pastor, I've had a lot of insight about this young couple. And I want you to know that what you see is what you get. They are not putting on a facade in front of you. They are the real deal. Today, I hope I can help us to understand everything that we should be able to understand about pastoring. If you think pastoring is only about what you can see here this morning, I mean this whole thing of everybody gets dressed up, the pastor walks in and the pastors walk in and boy, don't they look good today? Don't they always just look so good? And you know, that hair is always in place. <laughs> You know, the shiny shoes, uh, my goodness, I could just go on and on. Yes. <laughs> uh, let me just tell you, this has not just started in the last few years. When he just had been called to preach, he was at the home church, the Hebrew place. I had Brother Tim Hill there to preach one Sunday. He met Brother Hill coming out the side door of the church. Brother Hill introduced himself to him, and Drake said, yes, sir, I plan to have your job one day. <laughs> you know, so uh, he's, he's always had a, a drive and a go and a push to, to do ministry. When you come into a church like this as pastors, you know, everybody pretty much knows your name. We come in, we sing some songs, and then wait for it. There he goes. Pastor jumps to the stage. Everyone in the room listens to what he has to say. Who wouldn't want to be the person that everybody listens to? It seems like in the world today, everyone wants to be on the stage. But there's one big problem with thinking that when it comes to the church stage, what takes place on this stage is no show. And even though a few may misuse it for their own personal glory, that is not God's plan for the pulpit. The pulpit is to be a place where the word of God is preached. There are many roles Christians today expect their pastors to fill. Some think he should be an entertainer. Well, I'd say that Sister Taylor, Brother Drake's got that one pretty well. <laughs> Sister Taylor is so much like my wife, Vicki. She'd rather work from behind the scenes than in front of the scenes. People want the pastor to be able to make them laugh, make them feel good. They want him to be a journalist who can relay relevant information that will keep them succeeding in the world. Or even a life coach who can help them obtain their best life now. And most definitely, they want him to be a financial analyst that can steer them towards much money. I never have been able to comprehend this. People in the church want the pastor to help them be successfully financially, but when he tells them the one thing they can do to be successful is pay tithes, they get mad at him because all he's talking about is money. Amen. 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 I'll amen myself if y'all don't want to. But it's the truth. when we begin to think about the truths that we see in pastoring, there's much more than the face value that a lot of people see. Pastoring is a calling. It is a lifestyle. If you're a pastor, there is no time off. I finally clocked out last week after 40 plus years of full-time pastoring. My children used to laugh, even as small children laughed, because that's the only way they knew how to deal with it. When every time we went on a vacation, they would ask me, well, Daddy, what's going to happen this time to make us have to go home? You see, if something happens at home, a pastor is there to be his, to fulfill his role. If you're a pastor, there is no time off, because no matter what you're doing, 
If one of your congregation is in trouble, you'll be there. First Peter chapter 5, beginning with verse number 1. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. This passage in 1 Peter is a picture of what a pastor is. As pastors Drake and Taylor are prime examples of what it looks like in person. Pastoring can be the hardest thing in the world to do. Because unlike most every other occupation, you cannot always say or react in the way you want to at times. Ooh. Pastors and all teachers are judged at a completely different level than those in the congregation. In fact, I don't know if you knew this or not, but in the Bible, God's personal word to all human beings tells us that preaching and teaching should not be done by everyone. Not because that wouldn't be good, but because most people cannot handle the responsibility of it. Preachers and teachers are held at a higher accountability. Pastor, can you prove that? The word can. James 3 and verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. So every word, every deed must be measured carefully. You may think that Pastor Drake and Taylor work for you, but let me tell you, Mercy Hill Church body, that's not so. They serve you, but they work directly for God. They answer to him. Some of the time you will feel that they could have done things your way. But their first desire is to do things God's way. And if they do things God's way, that will benefit you the best. How many of you have ever thought you wanted something, but when you got it, you realized you didn't need it? You ever done that before? This crew right here has heard me talk about it. I, I wanted a boat real bad. Oh, I wanted a boat. I had to have a boat. Well, next thing you know, my best friend Kenny got a boat. Well, Kenny had a boat, and I was jealous. And I know none of y'all would ever confess to being jealous of what somebody else has. It would make, make you, you know, I, you've never seen a man who rides tractors or four wheelers when their neighbor gets a bigger one, they'll feel like they need a bigger one than the neighbor got. You know, y'all don't see those kind of things, I'm sure. You know, but, but I wanted a boat. Well, I'll just go. I go to the altar and I pray, oh, God, I want a boat. Lord, help me to have a boat. Lord, please give me a boat. God, why won't you let me have a boat? Kenny's got a boat. Why can't I have a boat? And one Sunday I was at the altar and I was just crying, having a pity party, feeling sorry for myself. And all of a sudden I looked and saw Kenny's mom over there. And I walked over and I said, where's Kenny this morning? Sunday morning. She said, he's in his boat down at the river. And just like that, the Holy Ghost checked my spirit and said, anything that might take you away from my house is not good for you. Preacher, are you saying we shouldn't have a boat? No, but it needs to be parked in the house on Sunday, and you need to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Anything that will separate you from God's word, anything that will separate you from the truth of God, I'm not saying it's wrong to have a vacation. I plan to take one sometime. But not every other Sunday when it's fishing time or hunting season. I'm doing better preaching than y'all doing shouting right now. But you see, it's those kind of things that a pastor has to stand up here and say that makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel like, I don't know if I like what he's saying. All he's trying to do is help you make sure that the number one most important thing in your life is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And 
And if he has to shake the bushes a little bit, he's going to shake the bushes. If he has to step on your toes a little bit, he's going to have to step on your toes. Because when this couple stands before the Lord, they want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. They want to hear you preach what I gave you to preach. And the church has to understand that they have to carry that load. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 11. So Christ himself gave apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Hebrews 13 and 17. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority. Because they keep watch over you and those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that would be of no benefit to you. Jeremiah 3 and 15. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. You see, when pastors follow God's will and the congregation honors them, the church will excel and people will be blessed. I have full confidence in Drake and Tabor that they will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. The truth is already there because of the difference that has taken place in this church just in their short tenure here. When you got a man and a woman that come in here that love you and care for you and preach the truth, I'm telling you, things will begin to change. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going I'm to just be honest, totally honest with y'all. The average church size of Church of God churches, especially in the state of Alabama, is around 75 feet. That's not God's plan. You see, I pastored a church around Gaston. We went in there, Sister Vicki and I did, and we were there 19 months. And in 19 months, we broke nine tithe records. We took in 60-something members. We bought three lots and a house next door to the church. We were having them find parking spaces and, and everything. And I went to the church council, and I told them, I said, guys, we got to go to two services. I've never said this to a congregation like this before. But I believe you'll see this day happen again. Amen. When the music director looked at me and said, I'm not directing music two services. It wears me out and do one. One take up finance and said, I ain't going to hang around two services. I'm not going to do that. That's too much work. Finally, the older gentleman on the council looked at me. I'll never forget this. He said, Pastor, we got enough here. He said, we don't need no more. He said, now, if you want more pay, we'll raise your pay. Because we got the money coming in. We can afford it. I'm not a hireling, and you're not a hireling. And I looked at him. I said, it has nothing to do with what money you pay me. It has to do with souls being saved and lives being changed. And I said, when you begin to chain my hands and you begin to lock my hands and tell me we don't want any other people here, you're telling me that you want to be in control of this church and that's totally out of, will, out of the will of God and out of God's word. A shepherd is to lead the sheep. Nowhere do you read that the sheep is supposed to lead the shepherd. Amen. I told you. See, I'm leaving in a few minutes. I'm getting the truck leaving, but I'm telling you the truth. I have known of churches that crippled themselves because they thought they had a better plan and a better idea than the pastor did. God called him. If God called you, the number to state office is 205-942-2090. Call the bishop and ask for an appointment and go see him and get a church. But don't sit in a pew and try to dictate what the man of God does because you haven't done it. Oh, help me, Jesus. I know what I'm saying. I know it's the truth. You've been who God has called you to be, and that is to be a 
supporter of the anointed one of God that God has sent you. He may not always win with everything that he tries. Do you win with everything you do? You ever messed up? I planted a garden one time. I saw this guy beside the house. He, he had this big old tractor and he was tilling up his big place. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm planting corn. I said, come over here in my yard and kill up this whole side of the yard. I'm going to plant a garden. He said, preacher, that's a big garden and that's nut grass right there. If you don't know what nut grass is, I thank the Lord for you that you've never dealt with it. But if you have, you know what nut grass is. He come over here and he, did, <laughs> he dug it up. Vicky and I got out there. All I had was a hoe and a rake. We lined up every row and we put everything in the ground and I watered it. And then it was time to go to camp meeting. I went to camp meeting and come back and the, some of the stuff was about this tall and the nut grass was about that tall. And it had taken the ground back over. I had to take my lawnmower and go in between the rows to try to cut the rows out to get in to harvest what I could. Why? Because I didn't understand I was not a farmer. I didn't understand what needed to be done to that ground to get rid of the nut grass. You may not understand all the nut grass he has to deal with. Hello, somebody. You may not understand everything he's going through because he can't tell you everything that God's telling him because it would shake you. It would scare you. But God's giving them a vision. Why? Because I know they don't have to be here. This couple right here, they could have already gone. There's larger churches that had noticed them and seen what is happening. They, they would love to have, but they want you because they believe God has sent them here. So you take change off of them. You support them. You back them. And you see that this church right here can be the biggest outreach in this area. Oh, Pastor, I remember when, honey. I'm tired of remembering when. I want to see right now. I want to see them about. Get on board. Pastor, I, I 
asking me to do. About time to make some changes, isn't it? Amen. I never put a mask on, but when I needed to go to Wally World, I wound up putting a mask on and walked into Wally World. How many of you remember when you had to put a mask on to go to the grocery store? You didn't like that, did you? But you got groceries, didn't you? You know, you do some things because it's what's asked of you. Jump on board. Follow the programs. Follow about it. Some of them would be wonderful. If you had been a part of the freedom groups that he supported, you're the one missing it. Freedom is it's awesome. It sets some of you free from things that's had you bound for years. It's freedom is awesome. So many different programs. Get on board. Be behind them. Support them. And I'm going to say this last thing because everybody always says that preachers talk too much about money. Take care of him. Take care of him. Be good to him. It don't hurt. I've always been amazed how people will give to other things but not want to give to the church or to the pastors. I went to church one time and lady said, man, when you retire, you get free. You know, they say when you get old, you say things you, 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 you say things you wouldn't say when you're younger. I'm feeling that feeling today. Because I had a member one time told me, said, well, we always felt like if, if we would keep you poor, God would keep you humble. <laughs> I went to a church one time that the pastor's council voted to buy a new couch for the parsonage and spend $400. I got a call before daylight the next morning from a lady that told me they'd never spend over $50 for a couch. And who did I think I was to deserve one better than $50? Come on. I don't believe there's none of those here. I don't believe there's one like that in here. You want him to be taken care of. You want her to be taken care of. My Lord, we don't have to give you. Is there a soup store thing? <laughs> well, we're going to have to find somebody to make sure to keep you the pretty suits on so you can smile for again. <laughs> I love this woman. Let me tell you something about this woman. He lost a great man in his life the other day. And he's got two brothers. some of you to step into some of that role of praying for you and lifting you up. And you remember when you lost your dad. Remember that? I think we expect the pastor to show up the next Sunday and act like nothing's happened. Because he's a pastor. He's not supposed to hurt. He's not supposed to show anything. He hurts just like you do. He cries just like you do. So not just in the next week but in the next several months you pray for him. You lift him up. You pray for Taylor. I'm going to tell you something. I still have not figured out. Come here, Taylor. I have not figured out yet how you got stuck with him. <laughs> this sweet girl right here is absolutely one of the sweetest girls that I ever pastored. A sweetheart. She always looks down on me. <laughs> She is a sweet, sweet mother. You love her. You be good to her. She's moved off down here away from her mom and her sister. Of course, I know they're running the road right now. They're down here a good bit. We're proud of that. That's fine. But you love her. You be good to her. The rest of y'all, too. Y'all come on. I'll get this whole thing real quick. This is part of my family. Are they kin to you, Brother Randy? Yeah. Yeah. Are they blood kin? Yeah. yeah. Jesus is blood. My family. Y'all mentioned a while ago, Brother Drake did said that some of his church family was better than him than some of his own blood kin. Let me tell you, I know these and am closer to these than I am a lot of my blood kin. I got first.
first cousin to walk in this room, and I couldn't tell you their name. Because they chose to live a different lifestyle and go a total different direction. They didn't want to be around me in my family. I pray for them, and I hope good things for them, but I got family. You got family. Don't you stand up. If you will, if you feel like you can, I want you to step up this way with this. And I want you to just get a circle around me. Y'all just come on up here.
appreciate it, so we love you. And um, I appreciate all those that have helped with the food. I'm looking forward to it. I told him I should have worn sweatpants instead of a suit today uh, because I'm going to want to eat. But we'll just we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Let's pray and uh, let's ask God to bless this day. Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for Pastor Randy. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing and for the uh, uh, mentorship and, Father, for the friendship that we have in him. And, Lord, I thank you for uh, having him here. God, I pray that you will bless him. And, Father, I pray that you will bless this congregation.